And so one of the fun issues that we've been facing lately is actually a lot of our early users who we love don't know about the breadth of our platform. And we now do lots more than we did even a year ago. And we have a real point of view about how to make ML projects effective. And so I feel so happy to introduce Carrie Phelps, who is the person interviewing uh, OpenAI in that slide I showed, I showed earlier, to give you a demo of our end-to-end -end platform and our thoughts on best practices. Carrie has been a PM at the company since the very beginning, and she's responsible for a lot of the long-term vision and a lot of the little details that make the product delightful. I'm so excited to get a look at this, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you. What a kind introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to work here for the past five years. And one of the things that you know, we're really seeing you know, to ground us is, is this simple ML workflow, this common pattern. And so I, I want to ask, how does a model go from creation to deployment? Almost every mature team we work with has three personas. And I want to see who's here in the audience today. So first, who's an ML practitioner in the audience? Can I see a show of hands? Yes, so training models, uh, you know, running new experiments, tracking metrics, visualizing results. So we also have ML ops engineers using weights and biases. Who here is an ML ops engineer? Can I see a show of hands? Awesome. So those are the people who are setting up infrastructure for the team, you know, managing and deploying models. And now, who's an ML team leader? Who's running an ML team right now? Awesome. Awesome. Great to see you in the audience. And those folks, you know, reviewing, deploying models, driving stakeholder alignment. Um, as, as a lot of you know, sometimes one person is doing all three of these things. But you know, what can we do to tighten the, the cycle of iteration across these different personas, these different stakeholders? Well, there's a critical piece that is flashing on the screen because the HDMI cable is not well connected. <laughs> so, you know, I'll stand over here. So, as you all well know, anything we can do to tighten that iteration cycle, to reduce compute costs and time investment, the more efficient the process is going to be. So, what does that life cycle look like? So, we've got, of course, training data sets, potentially a foundation model or a pre-trained model you're pulling in. You're training and evaluating that model, then communicating those results and documenting them, and finally deploying the model into production on an inference server. So what tools do you need across each of those steps? So we've got a whole suite of tools for experiment tracking for an ML practitioner. We also have tools for the ML ops persona. So that's someone who might want to launch new models and get them evaluated systematically and rigorously, then communicate those results to the team leader in a report, and then deploy that model into production. And this can seem really high level, right? This is a big problem to solve. So I'm going to go through a whirlwind demo today. Buckle up. This is going to be five minutes of showing you how to make this process simple and repeatable with WMB. So to ground this in a real example, let's imagine that I'm an ML practitioner. So I'm a new team member, I'm joining the Singularity Company, and they've just assigned me my first project. So we're contracting with Manchester United the Football Club, and we're looking at images of soccer matches. We're trying to analyze them. And as part of our pipeline, we have a model that classifies what's on the field in a frame of video. But we have a big problem. We've detected some drift. The model in production is no longer performing well. And we have to retrain that model on some fresh labeled data we've just gotten back from the labelers. And so the team has asked me to come in and retrain a model on the latest data. So this could seem really simple, right? This is a straightforward process, train a model. But you'd be surprised, even some of our most advanced customers, the process, the, the wild goose chase of finding all of the details to reproduce a model can sometimes be really frustrating. And so I'm going to walk through a very quick demo to show you how this is possible in WMB. So retraining, evaluating, and deploying. Are you ready? Let's get started. 
So here on the side of the page, I have all of the previous experiments in the project. So I can actually see all of the previous work. I'm not starting in the dark. I can also compare the model's performance, so I can see how different models line up, and I can even see sample predictions. So what's the actual data the model's looking at? And here, it's the soccer field. Um, and I can see notes that the team has shared with me. So, you know, any context that I might need to get started. And here, they've actually set up a training script that I can fork and reuse here in this job. So I'm going to come in here and just pull down that previous work in this model training job. And I can actually see all of the previous runs that were created using this job. Um, so really easy to access those previous results and see the details. So the ML Ops team that set this up is recommending I use our AWS cluster that's connected to WMB and has shared a little bit about how to update the config, so the hyperparameters and the data set for training. Now let's actually launch this directly from WMB. So here I can easily just fill in all of these details from a previous run. I don't have to start from scratch. So I'm picking a previous run to fill in the config. That's the hyperparameters. I can also tweak settings if I want to manually. And crucially, I can update the data set to the latest data set with just one line here. So now I'm pointing to the latest data. That's it. That's how I'm going to retrain the model. And how do I send it to the AWS cluster? Well, it's already connected right in here for me. Um, I also have some other compute clusters available to me if I want to launch somewhere else. But in this case, I'm going to use AWS. Now I'm ready to launch that new training run using the latest data. So retraining is happening. We just did the first step. OK, so we can see in this first row of the table, we've got that new run starting on our AWS cluster. And I want to clarify, this isn't a cluster that WMB is hosting. This is actually something that the MLOps team is managing and just connected to WMB. So it's very flexible and configurable, and it can be anywhere. Now, let's look at how that model is performing. How's the training going for my new model? That's looking pretty good. It's beating our previous results. So what happens now? I want to take the model that was produced from that experiment and do something with it. I want to move it to the next step. So I can come here and just pull up that model that was saved and then move it from training, where I just retrained it, to evaluation. And here I can do that with a simple click, linking it to the model registry. So that's that centralized home for all of our best models that are good candidates for deployment. And here, I'm linking it in. Great, now I'm pulling up the registry. And the team probably cares that I just did this, right? But who do I notify? Well, in Slack, they just got a notification in the channel. And you can see that here in the corner. The Slack channel just pinged, hey, you've got a new bottle. So everybody's on the same page about the changes I'm making. You're keeping people um, organized about these production models. So now, um, here's a description of, of the task for the model. So if someone's browsing our model registry, they can find you know, a task related to their interests. And we can also see the latest version that's just been added in here, and all of the previous versions of the model as well. Now, this is the really exciting part, the automations. So I can automatically evaluate any new model I linked in here. And this actually just kicked off. Like, this is happening now. And deployment as well. So I can have an automation to deploy a model um, using an external tool. So let's look at the evaluation one. So that's actually using a GitHub action. Um, so when I linked the model, it automatically kicked off this external tool, this GitHub action, to run this test and report. Now, what does the report look like? How can I see if the model is doing well? Well, I can actually track those results right back in WMB. So this external tool completely connects back to the central page where you were looking at the rest of your results. And here's the report that was just generated. And this is where you can easily see the comparison between my new model and the current production model. So I can see, OK, there's the GitHub action that generated it. Here's the model, so the, the new model that I just trained. And I can also see metrics in the same central view. So I can compare how the model did on different metrics, as well as sample predictions of model performance. And those can be directly organized in this 
central report that's entirely customizable. Now, what do we do for deployment? Well, we probably want to ask somebody for a review. So I can comment in here and directly ask my colleague Ken to take a look at this model. Now, if I have role-based access controls, I can also actually deploy the model directly from this report using this simple button where I just set this model to production and then that kicks off another GitHub action to deploy the model to production, just like we saw before. So this has gone through all of those three steps, but we're always trying to make this more simple. So here's something that we're cooking up. The idea is adding a deployment button directly to the bottle registry. So you could just pick, say, a SageMaker endpoint, and then click Deploy, and it would run that job on your behalf, so easily deploy your model. Now, I know that has been just a real whirlwind. So, I'm going to pause and summarize. Beyond experiment tracking, we're making the production workflow more efficient. We're making it easy to automate evaluation, communicate your results, and then deploy models to production. It's been so awesome to get to share this with you today. Now, back over to you, Lucas.